You're sitting at a coffee shop on Mars, keeping your head down, trying not to draw any attention to yourself. It's crowded, and many people are singing, dancing, and talking loudly about life on Mars. Your drink arrives, and you sip on it. So far, no one recognizes you. You're wearing a cloak with a large hoodie to cover your face and disguise yourself from everyone. Someone accidentally bumps into you and sees your face. The music stops, and now everyone is staring at you. You have nowhere to hide or run. You ignore the leering eyes and keep sipping on your beverage. An old bearded man sits in front of you, amazed to be in your presence. So, it's true. No one believed you'd make it, he says. You don't reply and continue with your drink. Everyone else gathers around you. Another man speaks. Well, are you not going to tell us how you escaped from the clutches of the space kraken? Everyone gasps in shock. No one has ever made it to tell the tale of the kraken, except you. Your plan was to find your messenger to take you to a spaceship far away from this planet. But it's too late, now that everyone knows you're here. And the messenger fled, knowing all the attention was on you. You lay back your hoodie and explain what happened. Two days ago. You're in your full gear, ready to make the voyage into deep space. You have a solo ship that's designed to maneuver through all the obstacles in space. You prepare the rest of the gear and fuel up. Everyone is watching you, knowing that you might not make it back. But the Kraken has been floating in space for too long, disrupting shipping containers bringing in goods. A small ship like yours can sneak past its acute sense of smell and vision but larger ships will get destroyed. You made it your mission to find this Kraken and study it. If you learn its ways and patterns, you can figure out how to get rid of it. Everyone says their goodbyes, and you lift off. You know that it'll be a very long way to get there, possibly three days in the emptiness of space. You saw some quick footage of it, but no one knows exactly where it sleeps, or if it even does sleep. You put on some tunes and set your ship for cruise control. You make some notes and set the camera to document yourself while you prepare everything you need. You also have some cameras outside recording everything that moves, even thermal sensors to catch living creatures floating in space. After a few hours, you exit the safe quarters of Mars and enter into the hostile territory. There is no place to hide or anyone to help you. A few little ships like yours pass by now and then. They watch you going further to the Kraken. You notice many floating signs powered by machines warning you about the Kraken. The cameras start recording, and you begin your video journal, which is transmitting to your network at home. So far, nothing. It's quiet and dark. Hours pass, and you're just floating in the middle of nowhere. You almost feel like you want to turn around. But then, you pick up something in the sensors. You see a large, live object nearby. You turn off the lights and slow down your ship. You resume recording and start talking to yourself, explaining everything. The object is getting closer and closer. You move aside to avoid it and latch on to a floating rock. But you still don't see anything. Out of nowhere, you see some glowing jellyfish-like creatures flowing together in a cluster. On your thermal sensors, they appear to be large objects. But in fact, they are just little creatures. According to your studies, these creatures are some of the main foods for the Kraken. So, they're probably running away from it. After a few minutes, the creatures float away, and you launch yourself out and turn the lights back on. A few more hours pass, and you still see no Kraken. Suddenly, a whoosh shakes your ship, and you're thrown slightly off course. You notice that a large object has spiked your thermal sensors and left. You keep going and check the playback settings to see if your cameras manage to catch something. You try to look carefully, but it seems like a gust of wind blew past you, which is weird because there is no wind in space. You check the thermal sensors and notice that a large object shaped like the Kraken has zipped past you. It's still around and it has probably caught your scent. Your systems got some DNA particles and are studying them. After a while, they show that the Kraken's skin can change colors according to its surrounding. Its skin is thick and made up of some cosmic fluorescent material that is new to any creature you've ever come across. 
the system continues studying it. After a while, the Kraken goes off your radar and disappears. You circle back, trying to find it. People back on Mars can see the data and already have information about its size and skin quality. They even see some footage you've managed to catch. As you continue driving towards it, you open your floodlights, trying to see anything. Your cameras are still rolling. Suddenly, the Kraken changes skin color and appears right in front of you. Its large tentacles flash around, whipping nearby space debris. Its large eye that's as big as a bus looks right at you. It opens its mouth, and you see layers of sharp teeth circling like a grinder. It has a large beak that can break your ship easily. It starts flashing its colors rapidly as a way to warn you. It shoots out some liquid to move in a no-gravity space environment. It's moving towards you until it launches itself. Your ship has an auto force field for protection, but it can't sustain the powerful bite of the Kraken. After only a few seconds, the shield breaks and your ship spirals down to another planet. You crash landed in a swampy land. Your ship has survived, but it can't take off. The analysis of the Kraken is ready. It shows that it doesn't need oxygen to breathe, and its DNA is evolving. Now that it got a bite of your force field, it can adapt itself to create a bio-force field of a similar nature. But you crashed on a planet that is foreign to you. You put on your safety suit and observe the environment. The atmosphere is filled with nitrogen and sulfur. You get out and walk around. It has similar gravity to that of Earth. As you venture through the swamp, you start seeing little skin particles similar to those your ship has caught. The liquid below you is some foreign substance that seems to be deteriorating your suit, so you opt to hover. The trees are strange and seem to be living off the atmosphere, but there is no sign of life anywhere. Suddenly, you see a huge crater that leads to the center of the planet. You enter it and see some ships similar to yours. It seems that the Kraken knocked them off course, and they all crash-landed on this planet. Many of them seem to be intact, while others are completely obliterated. Your sensors pick up another reading. It senses another creature dwelling in the center. You try to get closer. You're doing your best to be as gentle as possible, but you feel the ground shaking below you. You duck down and try to avoid the rocks falling overhead. A large tentacle pops out of nowhere, and then another and another. It swings itself out and crawls in the open. According to your system's studies, this Kraken is 10 times larger and even looks different. It doesn't spot you, but it can sense that you're around. It starts thrashing the planet, trying to find you. It knocks your ship. You try to find a way to start it, but it's missing a piece. You find another abandoned ship and take out the part that you need and put it on your ship. Your suit has an auto repair function that allows you to fix your ship without the tools. After a few minutes, it's ready for takeoff. You power up your ship, even though it's damaged, and lift off. You manage to sneak past the Kraken. Everyone at the coffee shop is silent. Many don't believe your stories. They had stopped receiving live transmissions before you were knocked off by the Space Kraken. Out of nowhere, an alarm rings and warns that the Kraken has arrived! Everyone rushes off in a panic. You hear a voice in your head. It's a bunch of gibberish, but you start getting visions of the Kraken talking to you. It knows you're here, and it's coming for you. The sky is burning. The world's oceans are foaming. Thunder and lightning are shaking the air. Two of the most terrible and powerful monsters collide in a duel. A harbinger of the end of the world. Just the sight of this monster can drive anyone mad great and atrocious Cthulhu. And the biggest squid on the planet is fighting against it. A beast that knows no fear because it's fear itself. The cause of a thousand shipwrecks. The mighty and hideous Kraken. Let the most epic fight in the history of the universe begin. You're on a fishing boat sailing in a calm ocean. The water is crystal clear, and there's no wind. The sea merges with the horizon. The land isn't visible, and you feel free. You look over the side of the boat and notice something strange in the water. 
You're floating in the center of a huge black spot, surrounded by a wide field of green. What's that? Oil spilled into the water that took on such a strange hue? Then why is it so perfectly round? Suddenly, you realize what it is, and the blood freezes in your veins. The black circle is the pupil in the center of a huge green eye. The thing that's looking right at you from the water right now is so big that your ship looks like a speck next to it. It's the Kraken. But don't worry, the monster isn't interested in a small prey like you. The Kraken has been sinking ships for centuries and never met any decent resistance. There are thousands of boats lying on the sea floor, but what's the point? The Kraken longs for a real challenge, but can't find it. The largest mammal on Earth is the blue whale, which is no more than a pet goldfish for the Kraken. Even a megalodon could easily lose to the tentacled beast in battle. Maybe look for some great monster on the bottom of the Mariana Trench? No, the pressure is too high, and there's almost nothing living there. But then, the Kraken has an idea. It goes to the most remote place on Earth, a place rarely visited and poorly explored. This place is called Point Nemo. Here, deep below the ocean surface, lies the ancient city of Relia built long before the appearance of humans, and amidst the slumbering ruins, the huge and powerful Cthulhu is dreaming. This ancient demigod has been resting here for hundreds of millennia. All this time, Cthulhu has been waiting for its hour to wreak havoc on Earth. It's sleeping, but even in its dreams, Cthulhu communicates with members of its very own cult following. It uses telepathy to get into their minds and make them do atrocious things. But all of a sudden, Cthulhu's slumber is interrupted. Who dares wake it so rudely? Cthulhu opens its angry red eyes, overgrown with seaweed, and sees a huge squid in front of it. The Kraken has finally found a worthy opponent. Immediately, it pounces on Cthulhu and wraps its tentacles around the monster's head. The fight begins. Cthulhu heavily pushes off from the sea floor and rushes to the surface, dragging the Kraken with it. Two giant monsters, larger than the tallest skyscrapers, emerge from the water. The sea is raging, and clouds are gathering over the battlefield. Enraged, Cthulhu strikes at the Kraken, but it doesn't seem to feel anything. Lightning flashes in the black and churning clouds. Cthulhu tries to tear the Kraken off itself, but the squid's tentacles firmly grasp the green monster. Meanwhile, you're on your way to Point Nemo to watch the battle unfold. You need to sail from the coast of Chile, and strange things are happening there right now. Hundreds of sailors are climbing on board dozens of ships. There are ordinary fishing vessels, as well as heavily armed and loaded Navy ships. And when you ask anyone where all these people are going, They all give you a dark look and answer, into eternity. The Kraken is taking the upper hand, and Cthulhu calls its followers to help. It hopes the ships will be able to help defeat the enemy, but it'll be two days before the first of them arrive from land. Cthulhu finally tears off the Kraken and throws it into the water. The squid attacks again, but Cthulhu grabs it by the tentacles and lifts it above its head. Lightning strikes the Kraken, but it's no more than a spark to the giant monster. At the same time, the entranced sailors stand on decks and look in the direction of the battlefield. At night, they fall asleep and see the same dream about the ancient city of Relia. In the center of it, there's a twisted chapel, and inside, Cthulhu sits on its throne, calling its followers. Day and night and day, the monsters have been fighting each other with their last strength. And at last, tiny dots gather around them. The ships have arrived. They're ready to attack the Kraken, and Cthulhu gives them a mental order. But the Kraken has its own ace up its sleeve. It hadn't been sinking ships just for fun. Very often, it saved thousands of marine creatures caught in fishing nets. And now, 
they and their offspring from all over the ocean come to help the kraken. Huge octopuses, blue whales, great white sharks, electric eels. They're all attacking enemy ships. Whales are ramming the submarines, and eels are turning vehicle engines off with their electric discharges. Suddenly, the kraken dives under the water. Did it give up? Got scared? Not likely. Cthulhu looks out into the ocean and waits for the squid to attack. The kraken swims beneath the fighting people and fish. It starts twisting its tentacles, creating a huge whirlpool. The ships are doomed now, and Cthulhu can only rely on itself. The kraken is a powerful creature, but it's an animal after all, while Cthulhu is incredibly intelligent, albeit malevolent. It understands that the Kraken is a sea monster and can be defeated once on land. Cthulhu's roar shakes the skies. Lightning bolts strike the ocean. The water is boiling. The ancient city of Relia is rising from the bottom of the sea. The Kraken can't escape here. It needs water. The squid fights Cthulhu with the last of its strength, but without its element, it quickly loses. Cthulhu is victorious. Now, being woken, it's going to destroy the rest of the world, as was foretold. But the fight couldn't have gone unnoticed. Thanks to satellite data, the world already knows what's happened, and a plan has been devised to put down the ancient monster in case it wins. Fighter jets enter the scene and attack Cthulhu. The monster raises its arms to the sky. Clouds are gathering around it. An electric discharge sparkles in the clouds, and electricity disappears within a few hundred miles, including the electronics on board the jets. They're falling down into the water. There's no way to defeat the mythic beast. But what is it? Satellites are suddenly falling from the sky in dozens. Cthulhu didn't know that Point Nemo is the dumping ground for space debris. Since this is the farthest point from Earth, it's safe to drop idle satellites here. Right now, hundreds of them are falling on the ancient city and bombarding the monster. Disoriented by the sudden assault, Cthulhu retreats back underwater along with its city. Then and there, it decides to go back to sleep for another thousand years and wait for a perfect moment to ruin the world. Cthulhu's mind-controlling ability made all the witnesses of the battle forget what they saw. Humanity is again unaware of the dangers from the depths. Cthulhu doesn't want people to be ready for its awakening. If you enter these coordinates in the GPS, you'll see where Point Nemo is. In 1997, oceanographers recorded a mysterious sound from the depths of the sea. It was called the bloop and can be easily found on the internet. This event led many people to believe in the existence of Cthulhu. But the panic didn't last long. It turned out that the bloop was the sound of a glacier splitting. Or maybe it's Cthulhu that made people think that way. Who knows? The Kraken is a colossal squid, a legendary sea monster, the biggest hunk of calamari you ever saw. And if this monster had existed, the world would have changed beyond recognition. The Kraken has powerful tentacles, solid muscles with suckers at the end. They're just impossible to escape. The Kraken can break a ship in half or just pull it down into the depths. But the worst thing about the Kraken is its size. According to old sailor stories, the Kraken reached 5,000 feet in length. That's almost 10 soccer fields. Hey, maybe the Kraken could play soccer. The Kraken legend said the monster was so giant that sailors mistook it for a small island. In past centuries, it would have been impossible to defeat such a beast. If the Kraken existed in reality, it might have had offspring. Yeah, in all the world's oceans, there would be giant monsters that could sink any ship. It's unlikely that the Kraken would have competitors in its habitat, so its population would grow strongly. Since the Kraken is enormous, it would need lots of food, so the population of other large sea animals would fall significantly. Blue whales, great white sharks, other giant squids, 
all the big sea creatures would be endangered. Many people are starving because of the reduction of large fish in the ocean. Urban economies that rely on fishing will be in decline. Prices for small fish around the world are getting more expensive because it's unsafe to fish. To defeat the kraken, you need powerful weapons, but the monster is tough to catch. The kraken belongs to the cephalopod genus. This species includes squid and octopus, some of the most intelligent creatures on the planet. The kraken is a skilled hunter and will never fight in the open. So what can you do? You can't track the kraken because it approaches from the depths, not the surface. Though you may be able to tell that the monster is somewhere nearby if a lot of fish surface. When the kraken swims, it scares all the fish in the vicinity. But it might already be too late. A huge tentacle emerges from the water, resembling a high tower. This tower falls on the deck of the ship, shattering it. The sailors scream and run. The kraken lands a second blow, and the vessel is almost capsized. Next, the kraken wraps its giant tentacles around the ship and pulls it to the bottom. Oh boy! What if the sailors manage to detach the ship from the tentacles of this monster? With the help of powerful weapons, the ship's crew strikes back. The kraken retreats under the water. It's hurt, angry. It seems the battle is over, but here comes the worst. A whirlpool forms beside the ship. Thanks to its considerable weight, when the kraken dives, it creates a whirlpool behind it. Like a drain in a giant bathtub, this whirlpool sucks the ship down. The battle with the kraken is lost. Well, that was unfortunate. You might be able to defeat the monster if you can anticipate its attack in advance. But the kraken can see you and your ship before you can see it. Colossal squids live in deep waters, and they have the largest eyes among all animals. The squid's eye is the size of a dinner plate. Thanks to this, they can see their prey from far away. Similarly, a kraken would spot the ship much sooner than sonar could pick up the kraken. It would always have the drop on you. Well, that's not good. Around the world, cargo transportation by ship is declining. Airlines provide the only safe connection between the continents. This will increase air pollution. The most successful enemy of the kraken is submarines. They travel at great depths and are equipped with powerful echolocators to help detect the kraken in advance. Subs are well-armed, too, and the round metal body is not so easy to destroy. A single kraken may be defeated by a submarine, but what if there are several sea monsters? Three kraken can wrap their tentacles around the submarine and drag it deeper into the water where the pressure will destroy their enemy. In other words, they'll have a crush on you. The existence of the Kraken will have dramatically changed the development of many countries. What if Christopher Columbus, on his famous journey, noticed an island that he thought was the New World? He approaches it, but tentacles emerge from the island and sink Columbus's ship. The colonization of North America is delayed, maybe until airplanes are invented. And the first crewed flight wasn't until the 20th century. There would be no Hollywood. There would be no hamburgers, no famous American music playing. There wouldn't be YouTube, which means you wouldn't be watching this video right now. Hmm. Worst of all, the internet wouldn't exist either. And all this because of one stupid monster squid. The Vikings wouldn't sail on their long ships to raid and settle foreign territories. The history of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and other Nordic countries would have changed drastically. Hey, maybe the Titanic wouldn't have hit an iceberg, but a giant sea monster instead. Though, it's unlikely that people would take trips on huge ocean liners in a world where the Kraken exists. Maybe, though, the Kraken isn't all that aggressive. Still, they need a lot of food, and because of the growing population of these monsters, there will be much less food in the ocean. Therefore, the Kraken will increasingly come to the surface for hunting. In the future, the Kraken will migrate closer to the shore. In many countries, people then are not allowed to swim in the ocean. Imagine floating on the waves and a monster the size of a skyscraper is swimming right below you. Relaxing at sea and on the beach will no longer be popular. Many countries that live off tourism become impoverished. When the krakens grow hungrier, they try to capture prey from land. A huge squid could attack small port cities. Houses, docks, streets, everything can be crushed. 
A tremendous amount of plastic is thrown into the ocean near the coasts of large countries. Billions of tons of plastic will bother the Kraken. An angry, hungry monster can attack bridges like the Golden Gate Bridge. Imagine that a huge squid surrounds the bridge and blocks all traffic. Some of these squids could break the strong cables with their power, and the entire structure would collapse into the water. Woo! It's good that the Kraken doesn't really exist to swim in our seas and oceans. At least, as far as we know. But could the monster have actually existed? Legends stretch back years, but scientific evidence appeared in the middle of the 19th century. In 1857, a 3 inch diameter squid bee was discovered on the coast of Denmark. Other huge squid remains were found in the Bahamas, and then scientists were convinced that gigantic squids existed. While colossal squid has been officially discovered since then, it's been more than a hundred years, and we still don't know what max size they can grow to. The fact is, colossal squids are one of the most elusive creatures on Earth. They live in the depths of the ocean where it's challenging for scientists to reach. Any dive to a greater depth requires powerful, bulky equipment. Underwater bath escapes and cameras make a lot of noise and light, which squids notice from afar. They flee before we can see them. The legend of the Kraken probably appeared because of a real colossal squid. People in the past didn't know about these creatures' existence, so when they saw one for the first time, they described it as a massive, terrible monster. It's difficult to say if these huge squids were the size of a small island, because the truth is, we've only studied about 5% of the ocean. It may be that in its depths, monsters much more terrible than the Kraken swim. Like my nephew, Peter. Peter.